Hello, this is Eggnog. We are back with another dogfight diagnostic. Today's dogfight diagnostic finds us in the Hawker Tempest, one of my favorite aircraft. Uh, late war, it's just kind of easy. I, I like to call it the uh, the Allies German plane. Those those Hispanos hit hard. But uh, as you can see, we're currently at a, a triple R um, refuel, rearm, and uh, repair station. We've been flying around for a little while already. Had a few successful sorties. I think I've already got at this time two, maybe three kills to my name. But we've got rearmed and refueled and lining up to, to take back off and, and, and get back out there. The nature of this dogfight is uh, uh, a little bit chaotic we, we dive into a, a situation where we're, we're pretty badly outnumbered and basically I only sort of keep tabs on one of my uh, four wingmen and that would be Noodle he's uh, in a P-51 and I'm sort of able to keep track of him but he and I work together to bring quite a large number of uh, airplanes down throughout the course of the dogfight so we'll uh, go ahead and jump forward to the point in time where that fight begins uh, and it begins with basically a call out for a um, uh, a contact 10 o'clock so go ahead and, and listen to that as we uh, jump forward in time here okay with you no joy Go ahead and move toward them, guys. I'll follow. This is radar. We're close to downs. Uh, current location 1508. Woman. Uh, I've still so got them. Looks like they're in a fight. Just above clouds. This is called my 12 o'clock. Check field, right? Oh, I see. Yep. Oh, there's two ships. Yeah. Now they're through cloud. I'm thinking it was one friendly and one enemy. They so this like initial there. contact sort of disappears. But then we spot yet another one who's apparently looking at the same fight. I actually get eyes on him. Let me pause here and um, uh, just draw a circle around him where I've, where I've spotted him in his, in his dive down toward the clouds. Okay, we'll keep going. I'm basically just going to kind of zoom in my yeah, focus and just watch this guy. I'm trying to get an ID. Yeah, this looks like a 109. I'm yeah, on him. You got the low clouds? Yeah. Yeah, you just drop all the clouds. I'm with him too. And with you, you're clear. Okay, I'll stay high. I think I see uh, all of radar and they're drawing flak now. Good hit, I'm gonna stick with them. That's one of the ground. You're still clear? Hit him. Good hit. I'm wounded. Hit him again. Okay, I got almost shut down by a chunk. Why over sped a bit? You're still clear. He's bailing. He's done. So there, that's Noodle. I've got eyes on uh, him, sort of my, I don't know, maybe 1.30, 2 o'clock. He's, he's past me. But the important thing is I, I know where he is, so I'm able to start kind of putting together, okay, uh, I've, I've got someone with me. We can we can work together and, and sort of regroup, figure out what's going on. Was this guy alone? Is there more? That sort of thing. I'm pulling in front of you right now. I overstep. Eyes on you. To letting him know that I see him. He's letting me know where he is. At this point, I'm kind of forming up on him and keeping a close eye on my six. Uh, yeah, we got a few, few planes behind us. Okay. Uh, no ID. Looks like they're kind of turning, though. Keep an eye on them. One's on my low six. All right. So at this point, with seeing him on my six like this, uh, I'm I'm in a defensive position. He's behind me, and I've got to figure out what I'm going to do about that. So I'm I'm going to practice something I I call the um, 
uh, defensive 90. Uh, what I'm going to do is, is set him so that I'm either looking at him 9 o'clock or 3 o'clock and just hold him kind of over, you know, one of those wingtips. In this case, we'll do the, the 9 o'clock wingtip, the left wingtip. What that does for me is, for one, it allows me to keep an, keep an eye on him and kind of control the situation, but also keeping him at the perpendicular, uh, I'm going to be moving constantly across sort of his, um, his gun sight. He's going to have a, a much harder time tracking that shot. It's sort of the maximum uh, difficulty deflection shot that I can give him. Not impossible to hit if he reads my speed and my uh, movement correctly, but much, much harder. So I'm going to hold him at that 90-degree angle, make it hard for him to, to take the shot, force him not to be able to get onto my six, and then once he blows through, I'm going to straighten out and, and zoom away. Um, the, the other thing I'll do while I'm pulling this 90 is kind of try to keep my nose um, either flat or, or even a little bit down uh, so that I don't lose too much of my speed and momentum while I'm uh, making this, this hard banking turn. And what, what, that, what the net effect of that is going to be is hopefully I'll, I'll uh, avoid his shots, he'll blast through, and I'll have uh, sort of the, the runaway advantage and he'll be too far behind and, and probably too slow um, to actually catch up with me. So let's see how that pans out for me. Yeah, there's one above him. Uh, I'm going to uh, tighten this up because I'm getting nervous. Yeah, same. Yep, he's shooting, he's shooting. So he's through, flatten out, nose over, get away. And at this point, I know Noodle saw him. I'm I'm really going to be counting on on Noodle to, to help me out. No, he's not got a shot yet. He's got distance. There you go. Good he's hits. Hit, he's hit. Yep. Is he still chasing me? No, he's off. Okay. Nice work. No, you're good. All right. I broke right. He's, he's, you got another diving in on the, on the scenario situation here. Okay, I've got another bandit taking taking shots here at, at Noodle, actually. And unfortunately, uh, I, I didn't make this clear enough to to noodle uh, I warned him that there was another coming in um, to I, I hadn't actually figured out that he was lining up noodle which which turns out to be you know rather problematic for for noodle because because I didn't sort of convey the sense of urgency this bandit manages to get some uh, some hits on noodle All right, I'm sticking with mine. Oh, I'm taking shot. Taking yeah shot. yeah yeah he's got a buddy so you can see Noodle breaking off to the to the right there. Uh, the one that uh, that Noodle chewed up is going going high. He's the streamer high, and then there's this bandit kind of blasting through that's just managed to knock Noodle up a, a little bit. Okay, plenty of friendlies here. Yeah, I hit him. I hit the guy on you. He's in. So we're trying to get eyes on the other at this point. As far as we know, there's only one left. There, I've got eyes on him, and I see Noodle. You've got one diving on you right now. And right there is when I know uh, we've got a problem. So I see the 109 diving on Noodle. Noodle's not hidden. He's streaming fuel. He's like a streak across the ground. So, of course, this 109 is going to pick him up. The best I can do at this point is try to give Noodle some sort of warning that uh, that this 109 is coming in and um, see if Noodle's able to get out of harm's way. Now, he's diving on you right now. Break, break, hard right. Good break, good break. I don't have much authority. Ooh, bail out if you can. Bail out. Yeah, unfortunately, that, that break looked really good, but as you hear Noodle say, he doesn't have much authority. Uh, that's from the, the hits, the damage that he sustained previously his maneuverability isn't sort of what it needs to be to evade i do think it looks to me like he um went a little bit up in his right hand break maybe if he'd nosed down into that right hand break he probably would have had a little bit of a better chance of, of surviving this but I understand too that he was in a low energy and high damage situation it was going to be pretty hard for him to uh to get out of this one so he, he does the best that he can with this situation can. bandit goes high i line him up and go for the revenge land some he's good hits <laughs> and and actually noodle manages to survive oh he's got a, he's got another friend but 
there's there's another and <laughs> and this one we never saw never knew didn't really have any warning um, so the most I can do at this point is try to get out from over the water so that I can bail out I'm I'm hit pretty hard now so I'm trying to get eyes on him there he is hits me a little bit more I just do some evasive things jink a little bit force him over He's, he's smart, oh blows past there, I can't get to him, so I um, I just bail out at this point. I'm gonna bail. I can't take this guy now. And that's really the end of the, uh, the dog fight. Obviously not gonna be doing much dog fighting on the very short ride in my parachute there, so. Um, yeah, main takeaway from this dog fight, I, I would say at least what I'd like to emphasize most is that uh, defensive maneuver I, I pulled at the top of my climb after shooting down the uh, initial, holding him at my 90 degree, um, slightly nose down, and then um, kind of kind of running away. It's a great defensive maneuver, certainly not a, a guaranteed, um, but it, it helps to keep your energy a little bit higher, helps uh, make make you a little harder to shoot. So when you know you've got somebody closing in on your six, about the best thing you can do is uh, try to put them on your 90, wait for them to go through, and then st straighten out and, uh, and, and kind of figure out what to do from there. So hopefully that's helpful. Uh, thanks for taking some time to watch this video. Remember to like and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye. So that's the south one, the north one might be a little quieter.